One thing I thought was really interesting about IIT is that it makes this prediction that two systems could have the exact same function in terms of input and output, but one would be conscious and one wouldn't. So I can show that on screen, but could you explain the difference between and what's the same about those two systems? Yeah, so the, this is a toy example. It's in my, uh, in my second last, uh, uh, last book, which I happen right, to see got you the have there. Feeling of Life Itself. But it's, I mean, it's well published in, so, so there's a significant literature on the mathematics of the, of the theory, which is non-trivial. So here what you have, you have systems, let's say that have two input neurons and two output neurons, in both cases, two input neurons and two output neurons, and they perform a computation. And you can show this is a strictly feed-forward system, like, you know, a standard neural net. Um, you know, in deep learning, although it only has three or four layers. And this is a much more complicated system um, that has heavily feedback. But you can show both computationally do exactly the same. They take the same input, <coughs> transform it in the same output. Here with only uh, six neurons, and here with many more neurons, I forgot, 20 or so, because this is feed forward. So computationally, they're identical. You cannot just, if, if you have a, grand, uh, uh, you know, a black box and you just have two input neurons and two output neurons and you don't look inside, you can't distinguish them. And so from a computational point of view, from a functional point of view, they're the same. They take the same input, transform it into the same output. So all of machine functionalism, so I guess I should back up. The other set of theories of consciousness are instances of what's known as um, machine functionalism or computational functionalism or, you know, Turing uh, computational functionalism, which asserts, going back to the philosopher Putnam, which asserts that consciousness has a function, and as you, if you can mimic that function, then everything comes along with it, including the conscious sensation, because there isn't anything else. So to get back to IIT, so functionalism would say... If they're conscious, they would be both conscious because if one is conscious and the other one does the same function as the one that's conscious, well, the other one will be conscious too. IT would say no. They're quite different. You have to look under the hood. You have to sort of look into the box, into the gray box, and look at the wiring. And this wiring is feed forward. So this has vastly more causal power than this one. In fact, this one, technically speaking, because it's all feed forward, doesn't have causal power. So IT would say this one doesn't feel like anything. This one is... You know, it has a tiny phi, it's very small, but it, it's non-zero. So although they both do the same thing, this doesn't feel like anything and this feels like something. And that strikes a lot of people as totally weird and different from anything else we've encountered in this day and age where we deal with computers all the time because it doesn't have a function. So a typical human brain, you have one node that gets, let's see, receives input from a 50 to 100,000 other nodes and projects its output to 50, 100,000 other nodes. Furthermore, if you look at two neurons, they will have massive overlap. And so th this gives rise to vast complexity in its causal powers. Now, IET would say, in principle, if they really mimic a little bit of the human cerebral cortex, in principle at least, you know, you really have to look at the, the details, the wiring, it will have the capacity to experience. People are working very hard at that, and they will solve it sooner or later. Subscribe to I'm Curious for more clips and watch the full interview on Patreon. Thanks for watching.